Yeah, it's uh, it's been something that's been on my mind all morning. Kind of woke up, saw all the news. Uh, it hits a little closer to home just because I was just there, especially uh, for a charity event. So it, it makes it harder when you can see where it is, you know, when you see all the video and puts things in perspective too. It kind of makes it hard to talk about a fight, especially. Uh, but, you know, it, it's really going to test my mindset and see uh, see where my focus is and, and make sure that I keep things, uh, because it could have been any one of us. So. Well, as you know, obviously Tony was here the other day. Um, has a lot to say about fighting you uh, as opposed to fighting maybe Connor or um, you know, I'm just curious what you take on this interim title. How much does it mean to you, and, and how how much would you prefer to be fighting somebody else, maybe other than Tony? I don't know. No, uh, Tony was always the fight to make. Uh, you know, he disrespected me. I don't I don't put up with it. You know, especially with what happened last night. It kind of you know. At the end of the day, like, I might talk a lot of shit. Like, we're going to go back and forth. You know, we might not like each other right now. But I'm trying to take money out this man's mouth, uh, out this out his family's mouth. He's trying to do the same to mine. Uh, he's going to be a little more disappointed because I know how bad he wanted it. And it just ain't going to happen. But I, 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 I wish him nothing but the best. And, and, and after the fight, I hope him nothing but... but book good things you know so uh you know yeah we're gonna talk a little bit more shit we still gonna get into it we was gonna get into it anyway we were gonna fight anyway uh whether it was for this gold championship or or not so you know i'm looking forward to it so there's nothing he said that's bothered you more than anything no i tell you don't bother me you know i don't i don't see there ain't no room for emotion in this game uh especially when he talked like i don't give a you know yeah he might have said some disrespectful stuff and like I mean, we just gonna have to get to get into a fight. That's it's cool. Like, I, you know, I didn't fought many of my friends, so it's and, you know it's cool. It ain't, it ain't gonna be nothing. Uh, you know, I ain't holding nothing against him. Yeah, DJ, do you have a pick in that fight? I already told him what he's got to do. <laughs> I already told him it's gonna be it's gonna be a tough fight. You know, uh, Tony Ferguson is well rounded and he's he's very uh, unpredictable. I would say that's his uh, my personal his greatest strength, and he's always. Um, He's tough, and he jumps for the legs and goes, and he goes everywhere. He's not scared to, and Kevin Lee, he's very athletic, very durable. Um, he has a great ground, a great ground game himself, uh, good at taking it back, um, very athletic, very explosive, still still young, getting better. Um, so it's going to be a great fight. I think when you look at it and you say a man is tough, and that's his biggest attribute, and that ain't good for him. Uh, he talk about all this training and running with yeah. mountains and you know running with the bears. Like that's just gonna let him take a longer ass whooping. That's it. But you he, know, he I don't is think... good in the scramble and everything. It's not that it's he's true. It's true. Tough. I mean, but he pulls out that dar side. He does well, uh, and I've always given Tony respect. I think he's been the number one contender for a long time. Where he's been down, come back, and win. Uh, and that's something to be said about success and skill. No, I think the dude's full of himself. I think he feel himself. He he feel like he the. You know, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to show all the holes in this game. I don't think he goes back and fills up those holes. You know, every time win, lose, or draw for me, I go back. I reassess my skill. Uh, I see where I need to make improvements, and I do. And I don't think he do that. So I think that's what this one really show. And I think that's the future of MMA. Uh, MMA is still so new. It's still so uh, it's still so evolving. If you stop evolving, you start dying. So uh, I'm, I'm ready to go out there and fill it. You know, DJ, you're somebody who always keeps your composure in a fight. I don't... I don't feel like we ever see you get flustered. And Tony is a person who, like I just said, is, can pull these things out in a scramble. What What is that mindset? I mean, there, there is something a little different kind of living in that chaotic moment and being okay with it. Yeah, we always talk about it in a gym. You never want to feel something that you uh, never felt before for some in the octagon. So, um, you know, training with Matthew and Brad Curtin and a lot of guys that I train with, um, I've trained with guys from Japan, Mizuno, Sakurai, uh, I mean, Wiki, Spencer Fisher, James Pober, Rich Franklin, Matt Brown, Tim Boach. So I've kind of been through all of them. I remember freaking Matt Brown, he'll come in Jimmy goes, death match. I'm like, what the fuck's that? He goes, go. And he just lighted me up. I'm like, dude, I'm 140 pounds. You're like a 170 year. I'm not going to do death match anymore with you. So and that's how I think the composure comes from. You know, I fought the heaviest hitters in this division, um, the best in this division. And after a while, you just go through and you just gain composure with, you know, with the year you just spit in octagon. What's Borg's biggest uh, weapon against you? What's the biggest uh, you, know, uh, you know, all of them have different weapons, you know, obviously. You know, Ray Borg, he's young, he's healthy. Hopefully he stays healthy. And, um, you know, he's with a great camp, Gray Jackson, and uh, we'll see what happens. You've always been, again, like I said, so composed, but how frustrated were you that this match, uh, 
You know, it's unfortunate, you know, but at the same time, you know, like I said, I, I, I wanted to thank the UFC for calling me, let me know that I said to find out from, you know, on internet or Twitter or Hawaii or whoever it is. Um, but it's on, you know, it's only so much you can control. So now, went back home, started training again. Four weeks passed. Here we are today. Something interesting Tony said the other day was actually, um, I think he even used the word upset or something when he found out that you guys were going to headline over you. Tony said that? Yeah. And it was interesting because then we said, well, did you not want to? And, and he said, well, I didn't say that. Again, I, I, I'm paraphrasing a little bit. I, I feel like... Uh, he, there was a comment made about you guys instead being the headliner. So I'm curious what you feel about. That. Yeah, uh, you know, obviously this is this is Tony and Kevin Lee's time. You right. know, I have my opportunity to headline USC 215. It was taken away from me, so I don't see it right or justice for me to headline USC 216. This is their card. I'm thankful USC we were able to make this fight happen so soon and get on, on this one. So. Even in light of the history, you could potentially be making. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Oh man, there's this. To me, I don't give a damn about it. And like to me, the the fight is all the same. Whether we fight the first fight of the night or we, you know, we fight in the bar, uh, we fight in my backyard, whatever. The the fight is gonna be the same. Whether we headline over, uh, Demetrius, he gonna go out there and he and he gonna do his thing, um, and he gonna do that regardless headline, whatever. Like it, it's just, you know, people talk about, oh, you change this, you change that. Like, nah, y'all really just changing. It's just, you know, what, whether you want to put me in one spot or the other, it don't make no difference to me. I'm still gonna be the same. But it is different when you're the headliner now. You know what I mean when you're. It's, for you, I'm just saying yeah. mentally, it, it, people do recognize that it's a little bit different sometimes. Yeah, it's different for, for people, yeah. but for me, it's it's no different. No, no. different. Like, I, I, I approach the fight all the same. Uh, once you get in there, it's me and him, and it's the same, you know, same breath, same same everything else. It don't, don't matter. Do you, do you feel like this uh, interim belt... It, do you think it's going to become like the championship? Like, do you think Connor is ever? Yeah, I think it already is. Or? I think it already is the, okay. the, the, the for the real championship. Uh, people talk about that, like Connor being in it. To me, he got to prove to me that he's ready to fight. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, the man has lost three of his last four fights. You know, I don't even think he, he beat Nick Diaz the second time. So, I mean, I like a big challenge. So he got to show me a little bit. You know, he's he's a small dude, two at 145. Uh, he was getting out wrestled by a dude that's 40 years old and a boxer. You know, he was beating him in the clinches and out wrestling him. And I mean, you got to show a little bit more than that to me. So after this one, maybe I might give him a shot at the title. Maybe I don't know. We'll we'll, we'll see. We'll see how he uh, we'll see how he kind of react. Maybe he should fight Nate again and, and prove that he can that he can be a tough fighter. So are you saying if Connor comes out and says I want to fight Kevin Lee, you might not take it? I mean, it'll be on my it'll be on my terms. It'll be on my timetable. I'll, I'll see when uh you know I'm, I'm expecting to take some damage in this fight, especially uh you know I'm I'm doing the hard work. I'm doing the heavy lifting. I'm fighting Tony. Nobody wanted to fight Tony. Connor didn't want to fight Tony. Uh, so you know I, it'll be on my timetable. I, I'll tell him when we gonna fight. If we if we fight on St. Patrick's Day, maybe maybe that might make some good business for me. So I don't know. I'll see. Uh, Demetrius, Kevin, I think it's interesting both of you were here today. Um, we look at the NFL, we look at the NBA, and there's an entire conversation happening about being socially conscious and socially aware. Um, I'm curious on both of your thoughts on what you've seen in the other sports, and have you guys uh, and other fighters, face it, other black fighters had conversations about what's happening outside the octagon? No. Okay. Not at all? Okay. okay. You can? Uh, I seem, you know, I, I really had to take my hat off this conference. Uh, I had so much respect for him for that, uh, just because they could crush the man uh, that he did. Uh, it, it's just a big inspiration for me, as especially as a black athlete. You know, like and for, for some reason, everybody want to shy away from it. Like that's just what what I am, and that's what that's the kids that are looking up to me. I'm trying to show them we came from the same situation uh, with a little bit of face punching, a little bit of hard work, a little bit of dedication. Shit can be different. Um, now, to me, the the way to solve it is to change those kids' minds, you know? Change, like I said, I started this hashtag 25 to life uh, because when I was growing up, I was never a bad kid, but I was at this time, you know, that I'd be doing 25 years for no, you know, it's just the way that I, that I, my mind can be a world champion at 25 and really a gold belt that'll make a difference in it, you know, you, you can think like a world champion even when you're 19 years old and, and, and that's what I try and bring to my brothers. That's what I try and bring to the kids that grew up like me too. So for somebody like LeBron James that's already been there, done there, the man got a billion dollars. You know, he got he got enough money to run a country. 
and for him to stand up for the little folks, I, I really had to get in my head talk to him. I just wish that my voice was a little bit bigger. Uh, I think with that gold belt around my waist, it will be. So, you know, we'll see. Do you th has uh, Dana had any conversations with you and the other fighters just about anything regarding this uh, at all? No, but we should. Are you, are you talking more about like the national anthem? People are doing that stuff, or just uh, the anthem coming out in some of the other leagues at all? At the end of the day, the, the 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 real important thing is creating a dialogue. You know, getting people to talk about it. It's crazy that I can't think of no other protest that gets backlash. You know what I mean? Nobody comes out against you know breast cancer awareness and say, oh, you shouldn't be standing up for this. Oh, you shouldn't be standing up for that. Uh, the fact that people are standing up against a protest is is kind of proof in itself that that, that shit ain't right. You know that we need that we need to to keep having these talks, keep having these dialogues, and and that's really all I think that people are trying to do is create that and to have somebody like I mean I ain't gonna you know. <laughs> then I'd be. Don't I, fight. I mean, yeah. I mean, to have somebody like like the president that people like look up to, you know what I mean? Like to have him like creating a rift between people just don't make sense. It, 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 it's, it's it's ridiculous. Right. I'm gonna bring it back to the octagon now. Um, you have a history of uh, getting mama jokes out on folks. I remember you and Kia, so you had the references to mamas. We Fox Sports, we did a feature on you, and you talking about Tony Ferguson, and, Mama, and uh, you and Karen talking back and forth. Uh, I talked about Tony Ferguson, Mama. Your, your quote was uh, when we interviewed you with your mom, and you said, "Well, my mom's probably gonna be crying during the fight, but his mama's gonna be doing more." Oh yeah, 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 right? yeah. So I just know that we picked. Yeah, no, no, no. Okay, well, look, look, look. It wasn't no mama joke even yeah, said. To, mama joke. It wasn't <laughs> even no mama joke said to Kiesa. Right. I told him that his mama gonna be there, so show up. I ain't think the man want, was gonna show up. Right. Uh, that you know, that ain't really a mama joke, you it's know. Oh, that's, that, look, I keep it real with people. Like, I'm going to tell you the truth, mm -hmm. you know, uh, whether you like it or not. And I'm keeping it real. His mama was there. Mm -hmm. I seen her. She was there. Uh, and I guarantee you, Tony, mom is going to cry after this. I'm sorry. Like, I hate to break it to you. I'm not being like a dick or nothing. Like, I'm just telling you the truth. You, your mama going to cry. My mama going to cry. She is. But she's going to cry tears of joy, I'll tell you that. I'm sorry to laugh. It's funny. You guys are entertaining. Um, you guys are definitely entertaining. Uh, Demetrius, uh, you know, we were doing a little research, and everybody knows you're a big gamer, big gamer head. Um, I'm just curious, man, like, who's asked you, uh, you know, tons of games and everything, but do you have, like, a particular person you might have a rivalry with the most? Rampage Jackson. Ramp Please elaborate. I just lit his ass up on PUBG the other night. Uh, him and his squad were going up in the house, and we saw him, and then really loved him. That's his, his online game name, is really loved him. Mm -hmm. He jumped out, and I shot his black ass. Right. And uh, <laughs> it was good. So that's Willie that's, Lump Lump is very apropos, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes. So that, that's, that's, that's our little beef, but it's a friendly beef, you know? Mm -hmm. He's been streaming for a long time. I've been streaming as well. It's a different way for us to interact with our fans. Um, so it's always like a friendly gesture that the... the, the the fans and the public love it. Sometimes me and him will do duels together, go run the streets and just light people up. Um, so it's fun. Yeah. Do you get in on the gaming at all, Kevin? Uh, nah, not really. I don't really play too much. You know, I, I mean, uh, I just, I got an Xbox, but I don't really, you know, they're not again, I might hop on Hot Halo or something like that. Okay. Uh, you got, you gonna take them under your wing on the Halo? I don't play Halo. Oh, damn. I'm a PC gamer. I don't know I can what to do there. I tried. I tried to be the bridge. Yeah, not too much. You know, I try. I try and chill out as much as possible. Okay. But, you know, nah, I, I should maybe. You maybe I should. Maybe that's the, maybe that's the key to, to uh, ten title defense. Um, the headband. I mean, the, the bandana is it's out here. Uh, right. Any is that directed at a particular fighter you may be going up against soon, or just mantra right now, or no, just if you feel like it's directed at you, then that's what you you know. Uh, whoever watch, if you feel like that's the right that you, you you can go ahead and do that. You know, you can go I'm punch yourself. Like I really don't. You know, again, like I really don't care. Like if, if people take what I say one way or another, like that's on you. I don't put it on me. Like that's on you, baby. So Demetrius, you know, uh, a lot of people are making obviously a big deal about you making this potentially, you know, setting this record. Um, it's almost frustrating, like to how calm you are about it in a way. Not frustrating, but like. It, it seems so matter-of-fact to you when it really is a big deal. I mean, you recognize that, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've, I've been here before. I've, I've done multiple atomic defenses before. So yeah. for me, you know, me getting amped up or 
wasting energy does no does no good. You know, right. at the point, I'm chill, sure relaxed, drinking my water, making sure weight's on point, make sure I'm staying healthy, um, banging out all the media, and then, you know, when, he, when I step in the octagon and go out there perform, you know, yeah, it's a big deal. Don't well, worry. Yeah, what will it mean if you are able to Oh, do I mean, it? I mean, I mean, I mean the world. Obviously, you know, there there has been another champion out there to have this many consecutive title defenses year after year. You know, uh, and it's just not that. Just trying to stay healthy. I'm always improving, going out there to try to finish my opponents, uh, passing on my drug test, you know what I mean? And then if I get past this number 11, hopefully I'm healthy, then maybe I could do another one, maybe 12, maybe 13, then we'll go from there. In the past, have, do you have a fight that's your favorite or just one that, you know, you had the most fun in or meant the most to you, any of these wins? No, they all mean something to me because every single one of them, I, I, I gone through something different, you know, the first thoughts of fight to the second thoughts of fight, you know, there's a lot of animosity there, uh, you know, with the first Joseph to the second Joseph, the Kyojo Ruchi, <laughs> so I, I have something to hold dear to my heart to all those fights. And you had gone a very long time without having um, injury or anything like that, um, and it seems like still your, your, your odds are better than a lot of other fights yeah. when it comes to that. Um, but was there something that happened that time? Did you train, change something in training? Was it When I was getting ready for the Wilson Hayes yeah. fight, or yeah. just too quick back to back, okay. you know, I mean, I told everybody the other day, like, if for some worse to happen with this fight and it fell off, I'll take the rest of the year off. I wouldn't fight for this year. I'm like, I'm done. People are like, why? You haven't even fought yet. You fought once a year. And I was like, well, dude, it's not. The fighting doesn't put the mileage in the body. I mean, the fighting is easy. It's, it's the, the time in the gym. So to be able to do eight-week camp and turn this into a 12-week camp, you know, my body's just like, I'm over it, dude. I'm over it. Like, I'm just calm before the storm right now. Just waiting to jump on the scale. 125. He jumps on it. 125. Go back, chill, get an octagon, then I'll just black out and go to work. Do you have concerns about? No, I don't. No, because no. it shouldn't be my concern. I'm not his coach. <coughs> I'm not his dietitian. I'm, I'm just his opponent. Uh, Demetrius, I was just uh, doing some research before I came in. Looked at fight metric in your division. You're number one all time right now in takedown, significant strikes, strike differential, significant strike uh, differential. Um, I, your place in the UFC is certified, legitimate, forever. Um, do you ever start to have those conversations or allow yourself to think about like where you are on the Mount Rushmore as far as like the best fighters of, of all time? No, because I don't build that. I won't be building that mountain. You know, uh, I'm going to be the one up there chiseling, doing you know, all that, that shit. I would be dope. Though. So, you know, it would just be a whole bunch of fucking pictures of myself. Um, you know what I said, you know, that, that can change. That can, you know, one person could... You know, I don't try to put myself on a pedestal. I just go out there and let my, my actions speak louder than words. Um, with that being said, it's awesome that, you know, Fight Matches has all that stuff down, but for me, it's just a byproduct of what I do in the gym. Kevin, you know, were you always uh, a talker? You know, a lot of people, everything now is like sort of post Connor, so everybody likes to just go, oh, he's trying to be Connor, he's trying to be the next, this, next that. If we were to go back and look at Motown phenom, you know, in like eighth grade or something. Like, I mean, were you were you the yeah, guy in I the FU headband? Like, yeah, yeah you know what I mean. It's weird. That, you know, people think only one person like yeah. is like that or something. Like, that's just the way we grew up. We talk shit. We get into fights. Like I said, I, I mean, I done fought some of my best friends, and I done called them way worse than mama jokes. I tell you that, like <laughs> shit. I, you know, I just talk shit. Like yeah. that's what we do. Uh, uh, and that's where I'm comfortable in doing. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of fighters, when they try and do it, like it, it comes off like, you know, that's why it don't really stick with a lot of people, just because they're not natural in doing it. Uh, what I like, that's just what I like to do. I like to talk shit. And I like to get in the fights. Like, if you, it don't matter how much money you pay me, I'm gonna do that anyway. So. Okay. Well, we talked about this um, a little bit, uh, but but that interview with Tony uh, that happened on the air with us after your fight with Michael. Um, in hindsight now, like, did you have any idea how big that thing was going to turn out to be and what a big deal and how much it would influence you guys actually getting to fight each other? Yeah, no, to me, that was just man to man. Like, I always show Tony respect. You know, he's an alumni from the same college I am. Uh, so when he was coming up to the Ultimate Fighter and all this, like, I would show him respect. For him to, for him to go, you know, and be like, oh, try and downplay me and continuously do that, like, I'm just not going to have it, so... Uh, to me, it was man to man. Whether it was you know a million people watching, a hundred million people watching, one person watching, it don't matter. Like 
like I said, we was gonna fight anyway. Like he he knew we was gonna fight. He approached me on, on International Fight Week. Uh, he tried to get in my face then with a bunch of PR guys and security around. Okay. And I'm like, and, I, and that's why I DM'd him. That's why I text him. And I'm like, bro, like just I'll text you my address. Like just come to my address. We can. I'll, I'll fuck you up. Like yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it ain't gotta be no security. Don't come around me with security. Because when you do, don't stand up like Kiesa, like, oh, security, get up in here. Like, no, it ain't going to be no security. If you want to get into a fight, we can. Like, that's bottom line. But so does he, has he bothered you more in an emotional way than other fighters? Then? Because, you know, sometimes people say, oh, don't get emotional about it. Don't care too much about whose face you're punching. But do you feel like that maybe fuels you more to, to actually have a dislike for the guy? Maybe or? outside of it, because after, uh, regardless, he's going to respect me after this. Regardless, because I'm going to beat the fuck uh, and I think Tony is a, a is the type of guy that would respect you after that. So, but as far as like him himself or during the fight, like I, I'm just looking at his skills. I look at his skill and then I, and I say he got a lot of holes in his game. You know, he take a lot of shots. He take a lot of damage. He like to depend on his chin. Uh, and he's got great cardio, but that's about it. You know, he's tough as fuck. But you know, when I look at his skill, like I like a, I like a good challenge like that. I like somebody that ain't been broken. So uh, I'm gonna go out there and break him. And I said that before the Kiesa fight too. Kiesa was somebody with that same type of mindset. And you even saw it after the fight. He still wanted to be in the fight. He still wanted yeah. to win the fight, and he was unconscious. Uh, you know, I think Tony's the same way, and to me, that excites me. You know, yeah, you got some guys like Edson Barboza or, or uh, you know, Pettis or somebody that, that's got great technical skill. But really, when you fight these guys that have got a great mindset that overshadow their technical skill, like, that, 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 that's more exciting to me. So that's what I'm excited for. And speaking of overshadowing, did the way that the Kiesa fight ended... Controversy always yeah. good. Controversy always good. Any, any, any media is good media. So, uh... Nah, I, I think even, like, you know, people wanted me to be mad at Dana for coming out. There's people talking about it around the water cooler on Monday. Uh, because now even I get recognized a whole lot more now. Uh, so people will come up to me and they'll be like, oh, yeah, Kiesa was out. And I'm like, yeah, I know. You know, you ain't got to tell me. You know, but it gives people something to talk about. Yeah. So after this one, it's going to be the same way. Tony going to go down and Tony going to bitch about it. Uh, when either he gonna lose on the scorecards or he gonna get knocked out and he gonna be upset and it's gonna get people he gonna do the same thing he gonna stand up and he gonna say oh this is bullshit and at the same time he gonna go straight to the hospital afterwards you know Demetrius he said that um, you know if this fight had been moved you wouldn't have fought again just stay at 25 because everybody keeps trying to create these super fights and all the stuff for you elsewhere yeah I'll say 25 um, obviously if uh, after this I probably won't fight till maybe in March, maybe February or March, possibly, we'll see. Um, but yeah, I'll say 25, I mean, last night when I had dinner, I had two chicken breasts with mashed potatoes, broccolini, it was seasoned, had all the good goods on it. <laughs> You're killing oh. and, and, and I woke up weighing 138.1, yeah, okay. so. Oh. I mean, it's still not a problem for you to make them. No, work. it's not. I mean, the only time I get to like 142, 143 is I have a, a, a rack of ribs with a, a delicious no, uh, Negro Modelo <laughs> and some, some salad. It's okay, baby. It's okay. I can eat whatever I want and still be able to make make this, well, not make, I'll still make the weight, but when I'm eating whatever I want, well, that's painful to watch, to be honest with you. Uh, what's that? dessert? Yeah, I eat dessert and all that stuff. I, mean, shit, I had Oreos before I came down. I had chocolate because I ate through all the vanilla Oreos that uh, that day before. So for me, making 125 is not a problem, you know. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, but if yeah. the money's right and if it makes sense for me to go up to to fight at 135, then yeah, then I'll, then I'll entertain it. But at the same time, those guys. I mean, last time I talked to Dom, he said he got to like 165. Yeah. I was like, I've never yeah. broke. You know, even after, I mean, I think the biggest yeah. I ever got was maybe 148, and that was after surgery because I couldn't train when I had my labor surgery. But other than that, I've never, when I'm act active, drinking, eating, whatever I want, never. You know, I might after a full meal, quick, uh, come home at 146, but then the next one I would go like 143, 142. So. Do you have an opinion on that Garbrandt Dillashaw fight? It was a good fight. Yeah. You're not leaning toward one guy taking the fight or not? No, it's a good fight. Yeah. Demetrius Henry announced that Henry against Sergio Pettis. Any thoughts on that fight? Big fight. You know, I think uh, him versus Hudo, he looked good his last fight. Um, I just feel bad for Wilson, man. I just, I just, you know. It's almost like. Uh, Why do you feel bad for him? Right. You know, just. He didn't prove. He looked exactly the same. 
He walked right into the cross. He wasn't doing what Southpaw should do. He shouldn't he should have stopped? He walked right into the cross, you know. Um, I, mean, I just feel bad for the guy, you know. I don't like people getting hurt. You know, I don't like hurting people either. So I just, I just feel like it's fucked up, <laughs> you know. Um, but you know, with Sergio Pettis, I think Sergio Pettis has more uh, a style that will get him to see those more fits because he's been around the block a little more. <laughs> but it'll be a good fight. Do you think the winner is probably the next one? Yeah, I think so. I mean, obviously, you know, he sort of just came back from, uh, you know, he's got on the winner, winner column and whatnot. Um, and so the Pettis, he's got a three-fight win streak. So if he wins this fight, you know, I think he's no more contender in the flyweight division. I mean, he has four fights in a row. I mean, I can't think of another athlete. Maybe Mega Metal Bivitov. I don't know how many fights he's got in a row. Uh, so, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. Kevin, how much do you think Habib factors into your division? Like Habib, sort of this entity that is spoken of but rarely seen, you know? Yeah, it's, it's weird. Uh, you even had somebody ask me earlier, like, why is it taking so long for me to get the shine? Yeah. Uh, and, and it's really, it's because Habib has a whole country behind him. You know, he's got all of Russia. Even the man don't even have to fight, and somehow he's still keeping himself in the media. I mean, you know, it's, it's weird. The man don't fight. So, what can I do? What can I do? Like, I've been calling this dude out for how long have been? It's been over a year now. Right, right. He just don't, he don't want to fight. He don't want to fight nobody, really. He don't want to fight nobody that proves uh, to be a challenge to him. You know, he want to hold on to that imaginary O that he think he got. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's weird. I mean, maybe. Maybe. I, I mean, I said I'll take him on in, in December, uh, December 2nd. But I don't know. Now Connor's saying that he, he might be coming back earlier. So, mm-hmm. we'll see. We'll see how, how this one shakes up after. But uh, I'm, I'm in a thing shake up, especially after this one. I thought it was really interesting. You were talking a little bit before about how certain fighters uh, sustain themselves with trash talk. And some are better at it than others. Did you have any opinion when? Tony was like, oh, but you know, you fighting on my undercard. I actually thought that was a good one. You know, yeah, whatever. I mean, Tony just a weird dude. Like, he just do weird shit. Like, he got a, I don't know. I, I think I'm doing the UFC a favor by getting him up out of here. Because he, he's just a weirdo. Like, you you see his personality. and Like, his fight style is, is even weird. But, like, his personality and all, he's just a weird dude. I, I think he's totally full of himself. I think he really think he... I don't know, man. I mean, I, I gave him respect for that. The way he stood up to him, I mean, hey, look, I, look, I'd have did the same thing, low key. I'd have, you know, we'd have had to throw down if he was, if he gonna stand up above me. We got, he's a weird dude, bro. It's an individual sport, and you gotta protect, you know, you, your entity. I mean, he's. I mean, I guess, I, I guess, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't see the whole thing. I didn't see what the audience was yeah. taking well, up about. He does sometimes have the us, the me against the world thing, but I think yeah. it's because of the way. Your job is nah, that you are. Nah, a he, he was he was a weird dude. When it, he would come back to you know we went to the same college, yeah. he would come back, and I could even see it in like I you know I people talked about him because he, yeah. he you know was the alumni or whatever, and I'm like I ain't hanging out with that motherfucker like he's weird like he just do weird shit especially since he moved out here to L A. Yeah. Uh, I mean I ain't gonna talk. Look, I'm in L A. now, so I ain't gonna talk too <laughs> bad about the folks, but yeah. you know, I mean he look. I listen to Joe's podcast. Eddie Bravo was on there eight nine again, and I know they be in some weird shit. So I don't know if uh, so I ain't gonna put my man business out there like that. I mean, he yeah. got the sunglasses on for a reason indoors. You know, it ain't cause he tired. Uh, you bring up a question: How many times were you guys both tested before this fight? <laughs> I think uh, three times yeah, for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They be trying to stay on my head. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not once since no. after the cancellation of this fight. Okay. So I, other than that, I can't keep track. So. Can they track that HFN though? No, they cannot. They cannot. <laughs> he, 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 HFW, tra- sorry. HFW. He, he tried to bring that up during that little conference call, and I didn't even really know how to respond to it. Like, that's the most ridiculous shit that I ever. Like, and really, like, I'm gonna really fuck him up for that. Like, I, I, I would fuck him up after that if, yeah. if he keep bringing up. The, I mean, come on, that, that, that's fucking ridiculous. Like, I, I, I've been working my whole life for this shit to try and take it away from me. Like, that, it just ain't gonna happen. It's fucking ridiculous. DJ, a, a popular uh, hot take after the cancellation of the fight with Ray Borg was, oh, DJ had this coming because you didn't entertain the... Does, do you have any sort of reaction to people who are feeling like wishing bad things for you just because you wouldn't take a fight against the guy who's not even in your division? Nope. I mean, does that affect you at all like in any way, shape, or form? You've got a lot of fans, obviously, but you have a lot of detractors as well. Nope. Nothing whatsoever. 
Hey, motivation. It's my motherfucking publisher right here. <laughs> 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 Look, they gonna hate. They gonna hate regardless, right? Yep. Right. You gonna still make the same amount of money. Let the motherfuckers. As, 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 as the great Danny Castillo always said, enjoy going to work on Monday, my friend. <laughs> Like Key and Peele now with the Obama sketches. Captain, just keep it real up there. Look, look, and, and I'm giving my man some pay per view points. Like, I'm expecting a little, you know, 5%. <laughs> <laughs> 5%? <laughs> 5%? <laughs> oh, we know? All right. All right. <laughs> That's it? Yeah, smooth. All right, there we go. Bam.